Hi, I'm Splashes, and today we are going to be looking at determining the max rate that we can get from a TNT blast chamber powered farm. So this hinges on two primary things, or a couple primary things, mainly that as blocks blow up, they are turned into entities which TNT can then blow up. This is essentially our rate limiting factor. So we have gone ahead and constructed two experiments to test this out. This experiment here allows us to determine how long it takes for items to fall, and this one tells us how far away items will be blown up. So this is a very simple device. We just spit out an item, it gets shot across, and these two pressure plates trigger this timer, which is accurate to one tick. So we just test this. Fires, fires across, and then eventually is pushed back, and we find that we get 30 uh, in-game ticks. The second experiment that we performed was we placed a block of TNT here, as well as tossed some entities along here in order to determine the safe distance from TNT. Uh, and when we did that, we found generally the safe distance to be eight blocks away. And interestingly enough, there's actually a point that we found that sometimes the TNT won't actually destroy the entities, but simply move them. So this here is a hemisphere of the blast radius of the TNT, where the TNT would be sitting on this level. Up at the top, there is this smaller section here, which depending, which will affect things later on, but we've gone ahead and tabulated the number of blocks in each of these rings. This is the piston layout, admittedly upside down, of Il Mango's Block 36 Blast Chamber. Each of these layers has 68 blocks on it, and is stacked four vertically for up to 272 blocks broken per instant. Once we have those bits of data, then we can go ahead and determine how far these blocks need to fall before the TNT will blow them up, and using that data, we can determine the amount of time plus the amount of blocks that we've gained. So with that, let's jump on over and look at some graphs and some maths. So we ran each of the tests four times and then tabulated the data, which can be found here. We took the average of this data and then we plugged in this data into this graph here. We find that for the most part, it does follow a nice smooth curve, except for the data for n blocks equaling 10, which seems to fit quite far outside the curve, and I'm not entirely sure why that is, uh, but it doesn't significantly change the data. We applied a curve fit to here. Now with this curve fit, there are a couple things that we know. We know that the initial velocity and position are going to be set to zero, so we have to shift this data in order so that we just have this term here, because these terms are not going to be useful for us. So applying that shift, we find that the shift is equal to 1.69 ticks, but we find that we get this curve here of y equaling 0.0144x squared, with an r squared value of 0.9923, which means it is a very accurate curve fit. Now if you go ahead and take this data here, and this here is essentially the distance is equal to 0.014 times the time squared. We take the derivative of that and we get the velocity, or 0.0288t, and we take the second derivative of that and we get a acceleration of 0.0288 meters per tick per tick. And this behavior is something that we would expect to see in Minecraft, as this is basically how you would do this in real life, except in real life there is drag, but over short distances and low velocities, drag is not a significant factor. So we take the acceleration from before of 0 0.2, sorry, 0 0.0288 meters per tick per tick, and we plug it into this kinematic equation and rearrange it in order to determine the number of ticks. Now depending on how far the items have fallen, we'll determine that the number of entities that the TNT will blow up. And that is based on the distance here. After a little bit of math, we're able to determine our entity gained per TNT, and then using this time ticks, we're able to get the total blocks per hour, which we find peaks out at around 700,000 blocks per hour. However, it should be noted that although El Mango's design 
has a volume of 272 ticks, or sorry, 272 blocks that could be blown up per detonation, it's actually closer to 240 blocks per detonation, which means this number we're going to see here is going to be closer in the range to around 600,000. What that math tells us is that every 28 ticks is the frequency that you want to be dropping your TNT into the blast chamber for the maximum speed. Also, that 600,000 blocks that we should be able to be getting from these farms is significantly less than what we're actually getting at this point in time, so there's still a lot more efficiency that can be added to these farms, which is very exciting. And we will be working on that shortly. But if you have any questions or comments, reach out to me in the comments below and we can talk about it or send me a message on Twitter. But with that, I've been Splashes. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!